Hey guys, today I'm kicking off Friberware with my fried chicken recipe. If you have any questions, check out the links in the description below. I've got my preview video with uh, kind of a description of what happens when you fry food. Uh, plus I'll have the link to the written blog post, so check that out. We're going to start off with our chicken. Here I have my breasts. And I'm just going to trim off any of these little extra bits that might kind of flop off into the oil. So you just want to inspect for any pin feathers missed during processing or um, any extra skin that might kind of uh, float out in the oil. So my legs and wings were fine. Uh, thighs though always have extra skin. And usually it's wrapped around on the back. So you just need to take your knife and trim that off. And that way that won't go floating out into the oil and making your thighs look weird and lumpy. So I'm going to go wash my hands and then we're going to marinate these. Okay, now with clean hands I can handle my seasonings. I'm going to start off with some hot sauce. Uh, I'm going to add a few tablespoons of this. Salt. Several rinds of fresh black pepper. Put the flat side of your knife onto the garlic. Place your palm directly over it. And press down until you hear it crack. There we go and that makes peeling so much easier. And then I'm just gonna split my clove long ways down the middle and drop that in. And I'm gonna do that th with the rest of these. Now that my chicken is seasoned, I can add my buttermilk. Uh, do a quick shake just in case and pour to cover. All that's left to do now is to get in here with my hands and make sure that every piece has a coating. All that's left now is to wash my hands and put this in the fridge. It needs at least four hours, although overnight would be ideal. So I'm almost ready to pull my chicken out of the fridge and that means it's time to mix up my dry dredge. I'm going to start off with about a cup of gluten-free all-purpose flour. To that, I'm going to add about a cup of cornmeal. Now I need to season my flour. So, one teaspoon of granulated garlic, half a teaspoon of cayenne, half a teaspoon of celery salt, several grinds of fresh black pepper, and salt. Whisk to combine. Then take one more look at your mixture and see if it needs any dot drink. Uh, this still looks a little bit plain, so I'm going to add a few more dashes of cayenne and a little more of my celery salt. Okay, with a little doctoring, my dredge is perfect. Next up, I have to actually fry my chicken, so I'm going to start off with my pot. And I'm going to fill that up with oil. And with fried chicken, you want to season at every step, so even the oil I add flavor to with bacon grease. And I've pulled my chicken from the fridge, and I'm going to carefully pour this into the strainer over a bowl to separate the actual chicken pieces from the buttermilk. Okay, so when working with raw chicken, you want to make sure to keep everything contained in a certain area that is easy to wipe down after you've had raw chicken around. So, um, I've got my chicken here coated in the buttermilk still. I've got my dry dredge and I have my landing pad. Uh, I'm going to work in order of which pieces I'm going to drop first and that way it'll give time for the dry dredge to start combining with the buttermilk to make uh, almost like a batter. 
And then I'm going to use wet hand, dry hand. So I just grabbed the chicken with this hand, which means I'm going to use this hand to coat. After you finish your thighs, start with your drumsticks. Once you finish your drumsticks, go to your wings. Uh, you're going to want to fully stretch them out so that way you can get the flower into every nook and cranny uh, because these are, of course, shaped fairly irregularly. So clean oil will never actually bubble. Uh, there's nothing in there to produce bubbles. So no extra oxygen, no water, nothing. So what you can do to check your temperature is hold your hand over and check for radiant heat. That needs to be turned up a little bit. And once it warms up a little bit more, I can drop my chicken. Okay, my oil is just about hot enough, so I'm going to start frying in batches. And uh, to drop the bottom couple pieces in, I want to find a good place to hold my tongs that won't knock off the coating that I worked so hard to establish. And you will want to use tongs because the oil will pop. So I'm just going to hold this under the surface for about 30 seconds or so just to start setting up the coating and then uh, that coating will protect it from sticking on the bottom as it cooks. Once you finish dropping your first batch, wash your hands. A few minutes later and my bubbles are fairly rapid so I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. And I want to maintain the proper temperature control because otherwise the outside will get overcooked while the inside is still raw. So I really have to monitor exactly how quickly it's cooking as a whole. And based on how fast it bubbles and how dark the chicken gets, I can adjust my temperature and make sure that it comes out perfect at the end. That one looks pretty and remove it to your draining rack. And drop your second batch in. And finally, it's time to drop my breasts. So my breasts are done. Um, there's some dark areas here. That's not burned. That's just because the oil's gotten dirty with this being my third batch of chicken. Now it's time to fix your plate. And that's how you make my fried chicken recipe. The outside is deliciously crunchy, while the inside is moist. Unfortunately, I can't be too clear in my instructions on how long to cook your chicken for or exactly what to set your stove or fryer to. I fry by intuition. So based on how fast the bubbles are rolling, then I adjust my temperature as needed. And I'm sure that with just a little bit of practice in your own kitchen, that you'll be able to replicate this exact same result at home. So that's it for this video. I'll see you guys next week for the continuation of Fry Brewery on the Deglutinizer.